Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial about substance painting and baking. And in this video, we are actually going to be covering how to troubleshoot baking because sometimes when you bake, you're going to get some interesting results and you don't know how to fix it. Well, this video is for you. So hopefully I can answer some of your questions that you may have about why baking and substance painter is not working. So let's start off with our low poly object. And then we also have our high poly object. And as you can see, it is really high. Now these were built in ZBrush and I retopologize it in Maya. And you can find those videos in a previous tutorial. So take a look at that if you wanna know how you created, how I created these. So the first thing I would highly recommend is that you need to make sure that your low poly model and your high poly model are in the same space. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to go ahead and freeze these transformations and also delete the history. And this high poly model should be exactly on top of your low poly object. Um, if they do not match. So for example, if my object is like this, it will only bake this area. If for example, I, I was trying to bake the other day and it actually only baked this area. So it's really important that these objects are actually on top of one another. So just make sure your high poly and your low poly are right on top. So the way baking works is that it's going to take a look at this low poly object and basically create what's called a cage and a cage just wraps around the object and then it bounces rays between the low poly and this case around it. And then that's how it figures out how to create normals. So uh, let's go ahead and just double check to make sure everything's okay. I'm going to scoot this a little bit forward. I think that's going to work. All right, so let's grab both of them. I'm going to delete the history, freeze the transformations, and I am going to call this my high poly and this is my low poly. All right, so now I'm ready to export. So they're on top of one another. Perfect. I'm going to grab my high poly, go to file export selection. I'm going to make a folder called OBJ in my scenes. Uh, most of the time I put it in assets, but in this case, I'm going to place it here. And this is going to be called my high poly crate. And notice that it's an OBJ export. Now I'm going to grab my low poly. I guess it's going to take a second because it's literally like millions of polygons. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Yes, you can, Maya. I am using Maya 2022. All right, there it is. If you actually want to know what your poly count is, you can go to display heads up display and we have a poly count. So if I have something selected, you'll see that I have about uh, 2,600 tries. And the other one is over here, which is about 3 million tries. So 1.5 million faces. So there we go. Another thing you need to remember is that your object needs to be UV map. So I'm going to go to UV map automatic mapping just for the sake of this exercise. Um, in reality, I would, if this was a production, for example, I would definitely spend the time in uh, sewing and all of that stuff. So this is what my UVs look like right now. I would definitely take the time to sew and everything, but for this exercise, uh, this baking should work just fine. All right, let's grab the low poly version. Let's go to file export selection. Same story, this is gonna be my low poly. And I don't know why I always type in create instead of crate. So I guess I'm just used to writing crate, uh, create. All right, let's export that. And let's go to Substance Painter. I am using the Adobe Substance 3D Painter at this time. All right, great. Let's go to File, New. Let's go to Select. Let me find my Sci-Fi Crate. I have a lot of projects here. Scenes. OBJ and I'm going to grab my low poly crate. I like to increase my document size and then click OK. All right, so this is my object. These are the UVs. So let's go ahead and do our bring in our baking. So we're going to go to texture set. We are going to go down to bake mesh maps. Over here we have a high definition mesh. Click on that little piece of paper, grab that high poly and increase your texture size to 2048 at least. I like to increase my dilation. I don't have any ID maps. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go ahead and increase all of this, including ambient occlusion, uh, sorry, occlusion, secondary rays for curvature, and then thickness as well. And then let's go ahead and bake. It's looking really cool. I saw some of the normals already. Here comes occlusion, already liking occlusion. Here comes the curvature map, which is the edges of your model, which is awesome. 
It counts the norm, uh, all the details of what we have on our Pi Poly. Here comes the thickness and position, and there we go. Click OK. All right, cool. It's looking really nice. I like the details that it's captured, the arrows, the screws, all that stuff. But when I get a little closer, you're going to notice a couple of things. There's this really weird edge going around here, and it doesn't look a very good, and it will show up in your textures. So what's causing this? Well, it's actually the low poly model. So I'm going to jump back into Maya. And let's talk about what normals are. So there's two types of normals. You have a normal that's actually a texture sheet, and then you have normals that are that stick out of the geometry. So every single object has a normal that sticks out of it. It's a perpendicular invisible line that sticks out of every single polygon, and that's how 3D is basically calculated. So if I go into display polygons face normals, it almost looks like fur. It's like this, these are normal. So as long as they're sticking out outside of it, it means that it's facing the correct direction. So for example, if I grab these here and go to mesh display and say reverse, it suddenly turns dark. And the reason why is because the normals are facing the wrong way. But if I go inside the crate, you'll see that they're actually gray here because the normals are facing inward. So if you're ever creating any, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But if you guys are creating any type of environments that needs to be inside, you probably want to switch your, you know, let's say you're creating an environment and it's in a, in a cube, you might actually, and let's erase this face here. And let's say you're going to populate this area. You probably want to go in and reverse the normals so that you get this nice gray environment and then you can start building. So those are the normals. So what's causing is, is that the normals are not soft and they're actually um, hard. Well, we need to actually fix the normals to get it to bake correctly. So let me get rid of this. So let's go back into Maya display face normals that will go get rid of that. And under mesh display, we have something called soften. So I'm going to go ahead and soften the normals and it's going to make my crate look like this. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and delete the history file export selection. I'm going to replace my low poly and I'm going to redo this. So let's go ahead and select my low poly object. Again, I like to do 2048 discard. We're back here. You can see that even here, the display looks nicer and I might as well go to 3d mode because it looks better this way. Let's go back into bake sheet, changes to 2048, increase all of the stuff. I'm just going to repeat what I did. Let's grab the high poly, uh, turn off ID, get the secondary rays, get uh, of ambient occlusion, curvature and thickness up and then bake. All right, let's take a look and you'll see how nice and clean that those lines are. They are now officially gone. And now you are ready to start texturing in Substance Painter. So really fast, you can fix those type of errors. So again, one of the main things you got to make sure is one, your normals are, if you're getting that weird noise, make sure your normals are softened. And the other thing you want to make sure is that your objects are actually on top of one another. So if you move anything, make sure you put it back. Now let's talk about this interesting little space right here. It's not a very good bake. And the reason why is because this is actually very indented. So if I go back into in here and grab my high poly and I'm going to do an isolate select here, you'll notice that this is what it's trying to bake, but it can't because this is actually pretty deep. So when we're talking about uh, creating normal maps, usually what we're trying to achieve is just detail information. So nice detail, simple information, something that doesn't stick out more than like, I would say half an inch to an inch. If you have something like this and you're trying to bake, then you probably want to actually model it in your low poly object. So for example, I would actually take my low poly object and think about um, extruding inward that indentation so that it would bake much cleaner. So that's something to consider if you guys want to fix that. Otherwise, you guys can play around with the bake mesh. We can also play around is with the max frontal distance and the max rear distance. So we can increase those values and see if anything changes. So I like everything else. I'm going to turn everything off. Now let's go ahead and bake. 
So now you'll notice that it looks a lot nicer than what it was before. Before it looked really strange, but by changing those values, we now have a nicer bake. So once again, just play around with those settings until you get the bake that you like. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by what you think by leaving a comment below. Sometimes baking can be a little bit challenging. It's kind of nice to know how to troubleshoot a little bit. Of course, Substance Painter is awesome. So you get to have a lot of fun with um, texturing this object and it's ready to rock and roll. And then of course you can export the materials and everything, but let me just have a little bit of fun with Substance here. So let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. Uh, hopefully you found it helpful and please like and subscribe if you guys like these videos and you want to see more. That's your message to me, letting me know that you like it and you want to see more videos. And feel free to make comments below what, about what other types of um, tutorials you would like to see. I always enjoyed getting uh, use, you know, your feedback so that I can create videos that are helpful for artists just like you. Uh, don't forget to share if you, feel, if you found this video helpful and you feel like another artist like you may need some help in baking and is having set some baking issues, please share this video. That would be amazing. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That is a website, my website, where it has free 3D models, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.